Hi, my beauties. My name is Dr. Stephanie Kappel, and I'm a board-certified, fellowship-trained cosmetic dermatologist in Newport Beach, California. And today, I wanted to do a video addressing dark circles under the eyes. So there's many reasons why you can have dark circles under the eyes. It can be from three main reasons, actually. From pigment, from hyperpigmentation, or just a genetic hyperpigmentation in that area. It could be from volume loss that creates like a sunken area and shadows being casted, which gives the appearance of dark circles or it could be thinning of the skin and showing of the underlying vasculature, which could give a, like a bluish purplish dark circle hue under the eye. Or it can just be a combination of two or more or all three of these changes that are happening over time. So I wanted to talk about the changes that can create these dark circles and each individual treatment that can be used to help minimize the appearance of the dark circles, depending on what's causing them. So certain treatments work better than others, and there's some that I feel aren't really beneficial at all, and I'll briefly discuss that. But I'm gonna try to keep this video shorter because some of my videos get so long because the topics can be so broad with so much content. It's, it's hard to just kind of hone in and just focus a video on just the content, like bits and pieces for each specific ailment that we're trying to correct. So for my next couple of videos, I'm just gonna just target like dark circles under the eyes or anything else that you guys want me to talk about. Drop a comment in the comment section, let me know what you wanna hear about. And also be sure to like, subscribe, and share this channel with anyone who may find it useful and anyone who appreciates non-sponsored content. I feel that I'm a rarity on YouTube these days because most dermatologists are sponsored, there's coupon codes, there's paid partnerships, there's sponsored content. I've never expect, uh, accepted a paid sponsorship by a company, and I never have, and I never will. Um, but I love the autonomy and the freedom to just truly recommend what I feel is best for my patients. So no paid partnerships, no sponsorships, and I only recommend what I feel is best. And if something new comes along that's better, I have the freedom to change my mind and recommend that new treatment. That said, the only way to truly grow on YouTube is just by word of mouth and just old school word of mouth sharing content. And I don't want to have to rely on companies to pay me and subscribers in order to share content information, which isn't really authentic in the first place. So just word of mouth and growing organically is just kind of my vibe. And I appreciate your support in sharing this channel with anyone who may find it useful. So my private practice is in Newport Beach and it's 100% cosmetics. I see about 30 patients a day and we just do non-invasive, non-surgical. Well, we do some surgery too, but I usually use lasers, devices, injectables, and a mixture of different things, peels, and some minimally invasive procedures, just to make people look and feel their best. A lot of people come in complaining of dark circles under the eyes. So after watching this video, you can hopefully find what treatment may be best for you, and it's just an informed decision that you can make based on knowledge that I provide for you to see what would be best for you. Because in a world where marketing is just misleading sometimes, and it's just overwhelming hearing about so many different treatment options for any particular ailment, dark circles in this case, it can be really overwhelming. So I just want to provide some insight and some background information that can help guide you make decisions what should be right treatments for you. So as I said before, dark circles under the eyes can happen from three main problems. It could be melanin, it could be underlying vasculature, or it could be volume loss. So we'll start with melanin first. So melanin is the pigment that's in our skin, and sometimes in darker skin types, Fitzpatrick 3 through 6, you can have a genetic predisposition to have a little darkness under the eyes, especially where you know the, uh, the skin is thinner and it can kind of gather, and when the skin gets crinkled and scrunched together, it can make that hyperpigmentation look even worse. So the dark circles can make us look tired or sick or old. And so there's different treatments that we can use to kind of help lighten that pigmentation, but you have to be very careful because some treatments can actually make it worse. If you guys follow me, you know I'm not a big microneedling fan. There's a ton of marketing uh, money in microneedling, Morpheus 8 and these kinds of things, but I've seen too many um, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, scarring, infection, unhappy patients from receiving these treatments um, from other practices who have them. So I don't recommend it because I actually have a few patients that I see regularly who are trying to reverse hyperpigmentation that they got from microneedling. So I'm not a big microneedling fan. That said, lasers are the most elegant, effective way to treat hyperpigmentation under the eye. However, the correct settings, the appropriate wavelength, and the certain patient selection, depending on the laser, just comes with years of experience and I'm a fellowship trained laser specialist, so knowing which lasers to use is key. Now there's some lasers that will treat the pigment without really risking any hyperpigmentation, regardless of your skin type. But there's also some lasers that can be a little bit more aggressive, meaning a little bit better results, but you have to protect the skin from having post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. And what does that mean? That means the laser will treat the pigment, but then the reaction of the skin to the laser from the traumatization of the laser results in pigmentation, and then you're worse off than you were before you started, and that's not good. So whenever I see a patient, I definitely like look and assess the individual 
individual skin type, how thin the skin is, how thick the skin is, um, you know, what the, what the pigmentation looks like, what, what is the Fitzpatrick skin type, and then we'll choose the lasers accordingly. Now, Clear and Brilliant is one of my favorite lasers, and Clear and Brilliant Touch is the most um, updated platform for this um, very light, gentle resurfacing device. It was actually engineered to treat hyperpigmentation and melasma in darker skin tones, so it's very safe and effective, especially if you're a darker skin type. But it is more safe and more superficial, which means it's a little bit weaker than like a Fraxel or a YAG or a Pico. And what that means is you need to do more treatments of it than you would with another laser. So like one Fraxel will equal three or four Clear and Brilliant treatments with respect to results, but the Clear and Brilliant will get you there in successive approximations to a goal. If you're a patient, you, a patient of mine, you've heard me say this before, slow and steady wins the race. You don't wanna hit it hard and be aggressive and then have side effects or complications. You wanna just go slowly and surely, safely with a gradual improvement, and that will look more natural too. So Clear and Brilliant Touch has two different wavelengths. There's a 1440 nanometer handpiece and the 1927 nanometer handpiece. The 1927 nanometer handpiece is the one that is targeted for melanin. So that is the handpiece that I would used to treat dark circles or hyperpigmentation under the eyes. You don't have to use both, you can actually customize it if somebody has more texture regularity, large pores, fine lines, and wrinkles, you would do more of the 1440. If they have more pigmentary alteration, it would be more heavily weighted on the 1927. And if you're trying to treat dark circles, which is what we're talking about in today's video, I would just do the 1927 nanometer handpiece under the eyes, do about six to eight passes, and I don't like to give my settings away because people always ask me my settings, and I'm like, if you have to ask another doctor's settings, you should probably get a little bit more training or do a fellowship so that you're safely and effectively treating your patients because it's not the same cookie cutter formula for everyone and it just comes from understanding these lasers understanding laser physics and understanding the endpoints from the patient's skin and how they're responding to um, the laser so that's clear and brilliant a little bit up a notch in um, a level of um, strength of the laser is a pico I love the Pico laser. Pico is called a Pico because it's a picosecond, which is a trillionth of a second, which is very, very fast. And what that means is there is a photoacoustic, not a photothermal reaction, so there's no dissipation of heat. And in English, what that means is that the Pico laser can safely treat darker skin types or hyperpigmentation under the eyes without the risk of hyperpigmentation. It's a little bit stronger, a little bit more aggressive laser, so you probably wouldn't need three or four treatments like you would a Clarin Brilliant. You probably only likely need one, maybe two, but it's, it's there's more downtime. There's you know a week of um, a little bit of crusting, scabbing, even maybe bruising, whereas Clarin Brilliant, you don't have any downtime at all. And then the next level would be either a YAG, a 1064 nanometer handpiece laser, or a Fraxel. I love a Fraxel. Fraxel is one of my favorite lasers. It's my workhorse laser. It's the, you don't have to wear makeup laser. Everybody always asks me if I have makeup on or if I have a filter. I've done Fraxel my whole life. I'm 45 now. I've done it since I was 22. And it's the no makeup laser and it just does all good things for the skin. Also, as a skin cancer surgeon, I used to use it for my um, skin cancer patients to minimize the risk of skin cancer and precancerous lesions because it creates healthy skin. And healthy skin is beautiful skin. So with that said, there is another um, wavelength on the Fraxel Restore. It's also known as Fraxel Dual, and the 1927 nanometer handpiece for that one is the one targeted for um, pigmentation. So we can use a 1927 from the Fraxel, which is kind of up a notch from the Pico. So you have Clear and Brilliant Pico, now we're talking about Fraxel Restore, which is a non-ablative laser. The problem with that is, is there can be some risk of hyperpigmentation, especially in my patient's skin types, Fitzpatrick three through six. So what we do in that case, we still can use that laser, but you have to pre and post condition the skin with a hydroquinone or a skin brightener to stabilize the melanocytes, which are the pigment producing cells in the skin so that they don't rebound with hyperpigmentation. What that means is before the laser, we gotta calm down the pigment producing cells so they don't say, oh gosh, I'm getting, you know, lasered and I'm having all this trauma and I'm gonna secrete a bunch of melanin to protect the skin. That's what post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation is. So to minimize that, all you have to do is pre and post condition the skin with either a hydroquinone, very short, um, very low um, percentage of it for a very short amount of time. I know some people express concern over hydroquinone long-term because it's been you know, pulled in the UK and things of that nature, but it's a very safe, effective, um, prescription medication um, that we use regularly for very short amounts of time and it really will help protect your skin from um, hyperpigmentation and also knowing the right settings, how many passes, what fluents to use, you know, there's so many different things that go into it and I don't do the same thing on everyone. So um, Fraxel is another uh, option for laser resurfacing to help minimize the appearance of dark circles. And then there is, you know, a YAG and then there is, you know, there, there are other, there's Halo, there's so many different other ones, but those are kind of like the, the main lasers that we can use to darken, um, lighten or brighten dark circles under the eyes with laser resurfacing.
So next up, dark circles that are due to volume loss or shadows being casted. So sometimes people actually don't have dark circles because there's any pigment deposition or a bluish hue from underlying vasculature. If you like stretch out the skin, there's no, <laughs> I look so funny when you do that. When you stretch out the skin, there's no pigment deposition there. But when you release the skin and it sinks back in, it looks dark because there's shadows being casted. The eyes look sunken. So the way we treat that is by under eye filler. Now, as a cosmetic dermatologist who does everything, you know, I do injectables, lasers, you know, tightening devices, thread lifts, surgery, I do everything, but fillers are a very small part of my practice. Do I do fillers? Yes, but there's an epidemic going around now, especially I'm in Orange County, it's ridiculous. So many spas are just pumping their patients full of you know 10 syringes of filler and people are looking all distorted and weird and that's not a good look and half the time I'm reversing other people's filler and trying to like give them a more natural look. Even for myself, I don't do a ton of filler. I never have, I don't really like it very much. I feel like tiny devices and lasers are the way to go. But for tear troughs and lips and certain areas, there's nothing really that can compare to a dermal filler. And injecting it with the appropriate technique, placing it in the right area, and using this, this uh, uh, you know, the correct in injection technique, which some people don't do sometimes, which is why people look distorted and weird. I mean, you can't really compare somebody who's just learning as they treat patients in a medi spa that somebody who's done like 20 years of training in this, and that's the difference. And I served on the advisory board for Vobella when it got the FDA indication to treat tear troughs, and that's my favorite filler of choice. It doesn't tindle, which gives that blue discoloration under the skin. It, it goes in very naturally. It integrates into the tissue beautifully. It lasts two to three years. Now, if you look and you see on YouTube, there's other doctors talking about, you know, tear trough filler is bad and it can have all these complications, and that's true. Anything can when it's not done correctly or when there's not a correct patient selection. So if sometimes, you know, in my, in my clinic, sometimes when people will come in, they want tear trough filler, and I'll have to turn them always say no actually you need to go to see my oculoplastic surgeons you probably need a surgical procedure there's nothing really that I can do to help with those tear troughs just with dermal filler alone and patient selection is really important because had I treated that patient it would have migrated it would have shown through their skin was too thin it wouldn't have looked good so when the right patient selection and when it's injected appropriately, I always use a cannula. There's no bruising, no swelling, no discomfort, no pain. People do really well and it's amazing. But then sometimes people have the experience of getting tear trough filler and they're getting poked with a syringe and they're bruised and they're swollen and it's traumatic and it just that's not a good experience and you're going to the wrong ejector if that's what's happening. So I feel like tear trough filler is a very, um, it's an art to it and again I've been doing it for over 15 years and I do less is more. I do half a syringe on either side, I let it settle, if people, people need more then they come back a month later and I'll give the patient a little bit more half and half, I go in half increments and sometimes you will think you know oh this patient's going to need two or three syringes to fill in those tear troughs and they actually don't need that much. And so just tincture of time, going really slow, being very conservative, being very methodical and precise with how you're injecting is everything. So dark circles for you know that are from volume loss or shadows being casted, the way you treat that is with dermal filler. And the third reason for dark circles under the eyes from underlying vasculature or your thin your skin your thin skinning. It's early Saturday morning, guys. I'm trying to get this video done before my kids wake up. So your skin is thinning and it shows the underlying vasculature. It's kind of like the anticubital fossa of your arm. You know when you look at your veins and you can see that blue green vein sometimes through that thin skin? The, thin, the skin starts to thin under the eyes as we get older. So even if you didn't really have a bluish, purplish hue under or dark circles under the eyes when you were younger, as your skin thins, the underlying vasculature shows through more and it gives the appearance or the illusion of like this dark circles under the eyes. And when you're tired, it gets worse because the vessels get ectatic and it can show up as these dark circles, especially my new mommies out there who are my patients who come in after having a baby and they're just starting to nurse and breastfeed and they're not sleeping and they have these dark circles doing a little tear trough filler or, you know, kind of doing a little bit of V-beam or something to um, brighten and, you know, make them look more vibrant and awake is, is really, really, really key and really beneficial. And sometimes there's just a dark hue under the eye that's anatomical and has been present since you were younger, when you were little. If you always kind of had dark circles under your eye, that's just your anatomy. You have you know larger ectatic vessels there or your skin's thinner. But for whatever the reason, the treatment of choice for that is a V-beam laser. V-beam, V just stands for vasculature. It's a 595 nanometer wavelength laser that's targeted, it actually is most commonly used to treat redness, rosacea, broken capillaries, and things that are of red chromophore, like hemoglobin is the chromophore. That, and in English what that means is the laser is attracted to hemoglobin, so it's attracted to red or purple. And what happens is we do a couple passes under the eyes, and usually I tell my patients they'll need anywhere, anywhere from one to three treatments, depending on how severe the dark circles are. But there's really, you know, no, not really much 
such discomfort. We can numb you for it. With numbing, you don't feel anything at all. But when we don't numb you, and sometimes laser works better if you're not numb because numbing cream can cause redness and then you don't want the laser to be confused and going, being attracted to the redness from the numbing. You want it to be attracted just to the vessel so they can hit it hard and be more effective. So um, with the theory of selective photothermolysis, I'm gonna try not to dork out too much, but I know you guys like it when I get scientific. But what happens is you do a couple of different passes under the eyes and you do that a month later for a second treatment and a month later again for a third treatment and it just brightens up the eyes and it's a beautiful brightening effect. And now sometimes it's not permanent, you know, the results will last maybe two or three years, but your genetic blueprint's gonna wanna make those vessels again and we just hit it again and it's more like an overall maintenance that you have to do every two or three years, but definitely worth it so you don't have to bother with concealer or makeup hiding the dark circles or try to Photoshop under your eyes all the time. It's just, instead of using makeup, lasers are like my tools in my toolbox to just get the skin healthy to fix all blemishes and not have to rely on makeup concealer or anything to cover up the blemishes. So V-beam for under eye dark circles that are from vasculature. And because we've had, we talked about different topics that can cause dark circles under the eyes, it's most important to go to a provider and discuss you know, your dark circles under your eyes, talk about why they're happening. And sometimes it's a combination of things. Maybe you have a little bit of melanin in there and you have some volume loss, or maybe you have thin skin with underlying vasculature and you have some volume loss, or you have some melanin. So it just depends on what's causing the dark circles. And that's how you know what treatment to combine or to add to help it brighten up under the eyes. And once your under eye area is bright, you look awake, you look refreshed, you look younger, you look healthier, and it's just the best thing ever. So you just have to go to a provider who knows what they're doing and knows what options are available because it's hard to find someone, you know, especially in cosmetic dermatology, everybody nowadays is a cosmetic dermatologist, but they may be doing one Botox patient a day. You know, you want to go to somebody, especially if they're ACGME fellowship trained, we get a ton of this. We log in thousands of cases of doing all these different procedures, every different, every laser, all different devices, and we're proctored and we're mentored and you just come out of there very highly trained. So that's my advice to you guys. Hope you like this video. I'm trying to keep them shorter, but drop a comment in the comment section and like and subscribe and share this non-sponsored content with anyone who wants non-sponsored content from a board certified dermatologist. All right, I love you guys.